Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Vicious, and welcome to a brand new tutorial video. Today we're going to be going over the second video in the series of the Sonoff Tasmoda Home Automation Smart Device series. So the first video went over the baseline, the very first thing you have to do, which is take a brand new Sonoff device and flash it with some third-party firmware. We decided to go with the Tasmoda firmware, so that's the one we'll be featuring today in this video tutorial. The others might also have some of the same features and also work for you, but I haven't tested them personally to say I know for sure. So just a recap of the last video, what we did was we flashed it and programmed it, and we have it currently connected to my network. One of the ways that Tasmoda exposes these devices for control is through HTTP. They actually have their own built-in web interface, which is what we have pulled up right now, where we can turn off and on the device. So in the bottom right-hand corner, we have a small webcam feed, and you can see the green LED to show the device is on. If I click on my toggle button here, you'll see that kicks off and the device went off as well. So it's a really nice, quick, and easy way to interact with these. However, chances are you're not going to want to open up your uh, web browser and go into it and do this every single time. And it only exposes a small number of commands, like toggling it on and off. If you go into the Tasmoda wiki, you'll see that there's hundreds of commands. And all of these can be done through the HTTP uh, request method. So the one that we were just running was the toggle command through the web interface. We can actually run this as a direct URL. So let's take this real quick, copy it into our browser. We need to replace zone off with the IP address of our device, which is 192.168.1.133. Now, as soon as I press enter to send this, it should turn it off because it's currently on. So let's test that real quick. And there you go. Now, the cool thing, not only does it just work and tell you the command, but it actually returns results as well. So you can see the power went off. So this is really important. We'll get to that in a few minutes. Now, the goal of today's tutorial is to take this capability and make it even more capable by automating it and scripting it into a free open uh, source programming language called AutoIt. So you want to go to the AutoIt website and download their program and install it. Also, make sure you download and install the SCITE editor and that should all come from, let's see, let's go find the downloads right there. They're all going to be packaged somewhere similar. So here is the current versions, and here's the script editor as well. So you can definitely edit scripts without this, but it makes it so much easier. And we actually are going to be using one of the features built into this today that would not be in, say, Notepad or Notepad++. Let's go ahead and move into our coding section of the tutorial. So we open up our video folder that we created. And now that everything's already installed on my computer, I can simply go to the context by right clicking and saying a new auto it script. And we'll call this our video tutorial. And we'll right click again and we can go straight into editing that script. And it's gonna open up an SEITE for me. I'm gonna delete out the stuff that was thrown in there by default. And we wanna write our first line of code. So for every auto it command, you can pretty much just go into Google and search auto it and the name of the command and you'll get lots of information on how to use it and what it does. So the, fir the first command we'll use today is gonna be inet read and you'll find the wiki page that tells you what that script does and how it works. It only needs one input, which is the URL. And then what it's gonna to return to us is a binary string that has the information that web page contains. Now I found out through trial and error that the INET read, because it is reaching out to that website to read the contents, also acts as a way to execute the HTTP command that we just wrote right here. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and write up the first line of code. We're going to say INET read, and then we're going to put in our URL, and save it, and run it. As soon as I run it, right now we're currently off. So if you watch that feed again on the webcam, it should turn it on. So tools, go, and boom, instantly. One line of code, you can now toggle this on and off through AutoIt. With AutoIt installed, we can easily right click on any script that we've created and say compile that script and it will make it into an EXE for us. So let's wait that, let that finish real quick. And now I have a program. And if I run that program, it will execute that command. So every time I run this program, it's going to turn it off and then on again. 
that lets us now say create a shortcut to that program and put that in our Windows startup folder, put it in our registry, put it in our group policy, and you can have localized automation. So the way that I'm using this right now is I have a power on and a power off script that just simply has one line of code. And one of them goes into my login scripts and one goes into my shutdown scripts. So every time I log into my computer, I have a switch, a Sonoff switch with Tasmoda on it that turns on my speaker amplifier, turns on my audio mixer and all my other gear that I need to have on when I use my computer. And then when I shut down the computer, it turns all that off. So it's an easy way to save me a few minutes of having to manually turn everything on. And it saves me electricity in the house because I don't keep anything on longer than necessary. So that's cool and that's very useful on its own. But before we end the tutorial with just that, we're gonna kick it up one more notch and show you how to wrap this into a graphic interface because then you have a very quick way to access this in real time while you're using your computer. So let's go and create a new script and we'll call this uh, video tutorial GUI. And we'll just go into edit that script delete the pre-built stuff. And so this is where we'll be using SCITE. Under tools, we have a Coda form designer. We'll run that. And it's a graphic interface for building a graph. It's a graphic interface for building a graphic interface. It's actually the proper thing to say, but it didn't want to come out right. So you can do all this by hand coding. It's totally possible, but this just makes it easier for you to at least get your baseline. And then you can go and tweak it more if you want to. We can just click on some of these basic features up here to start putting them into a little form. I mean, you can first, first of all, as you drag and drop this, you can choose the size that your graphic interface will be. You can name it. If you want to name that form to something different, you can name it. So right here's where I would name this, like say video tutorial GUI. I'm going to put a label. So mouse over, we'll see right here, label. Go down label in the middle. I want to call that label. The caption for that will be video tutorial GUI. Under font, I can change the font size, make that say a 12. And under the style, I can say make that bold. So there we go. We get a nice little caption. And then we'll say um, another label. We'll call this our first switch and what we want to put on here is a button so we'll create a button just click it and boom and we'll call this our tutorial button ta-da now we can save that form if we ever want to come back to it and edit it or we can just go ahead and start putting it into work by say generate my form code and insert into SEITE so if you were going to hand create that form, this is what you would have been writing. Now it makes it easier for us to go and change anything because it was pre-typed for us. We can easily go modify small things like the names and all that. And it even puts a loop in here for us so that way the graphic interface stays open. So while one, which is a condition that is always true, it's going to be searching for any messages that come from that graphic interface. If it sees the message that you clicked on the close button, the X button, then it will exit the program. So let's go tools, let's run our code. And you can see here's our graphic interface. Our button currently doesn't do anything. And if we click on the X, it exits the program. That's the only code we have right now. So let's take what we just wrote a second ago, that one line of code and put it to work for us. So let's go back to our tutorial folder, grab our one line of code, And we're going to add a new case statement into our loop. So we'll say case, you received the message that button one was clicked. I want you to do this. And we'll hit save, tools go. Now our button, every time we click it, should run our toggle command. So let's look at that webcam feed. Currently that thing is off. There's no green LED. If I click this button, boom, on. Click it again, off. You can see that that's going to give you a very quick and powerful way to interface all of these switches that you've set up in your home smart environment. And you can do a lot more with it than just, just that. So before we go, we'll kick it up one more notch. We'll add one more, not quite advanced, but very useful feature. 
Now you remember we said that the web page actually reports back what's going on when we run these commands. We know that inet read is reading the website, so it's actually reading that information. So we can put that to use. And let me just show you what that means in real life terms. So we'll say s read equals inet read. So now we just said whatever the output of inet read is, uh, go ahead and give it that value inside of the variable s read. And I want to open up a message box. And I want you to tell me the value of s read in plain text. So now when I click that button, we're going to get a pop up window that's going to tell us what it sees. So if I click on this, here's a pop up, and this is what the value of that web page is. Now, unfortunately, most of us don't read hexadecimal. We want to convert this from binary to a real life string. So we can wrap this. We'll say binary to string, put it inside of quotes, and it will convert that from the hexadecimal to a regular real life readable value. So tools run, click the button, and here you go, power off. Same thing that we saw when we ran it from the actual browser. So how are we going to use that? Well, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to set up a very simple conditional statement here. We'll delete out our message box, and we're going to say if sread, actually we'll say if string in string, so this is a command that says, give me an input, and I'm going to input the results of that website from our sread command or variable. If it contains the word on, then GUI control set data. What control do I want to set the data to, which is button one? And what do I want to set it to? I'm going to say set it to on. Else. Meaning, if this is not true, I want you to do something else. GUI control set data for button one to off. And then end our if statement. All right, let's break that down one more time. When I press button one, I want you to take the variable s read and assign it the output from binary to string and then we're reading the website, and then reading the website executes the command. We're going to get a result from that that either says on or off, and what we're saying is if it says on, I want you to set the value of button 1 to on. If it's not on, then I want you to set the value of button 1 to off. What that translates to in real life is now when I click this button, it's actually going to report the status. So you can see that it's on right now, and it's green. If I click it again, it goes off and it says it's off. So it gives us an intelligent way to actually see what's going on with our switches without being on needing to see them in real life. So this could be on the other side of the house and I would know that it's currently off or on. So that is pretty much gonna wrap up the beginner tutorial on this. We're gonna get more advanced. We're gonna have more conditionals. We're gonna have more features and more automation in the next video where we get into some more advanced scripting. So I hope everyone was able to enjoy this video and learn something very useful that you can implement in one way or another. As always, if you found that you had some questions, feel free to ask those to me in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer those questions for you. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and say thank you for the time and effort that goes into it. Other than that, I hope everyone enjoyed the video. And once again, just want to remind you this was Vicious, and I'll see you next time.